Shall we, shall we start this, with, with the point that I was making to the Chancellor? In fact, let's, let, let's start with the broad brush stuff in, in, instead. You sat opposite Rishi Sunak yesterday, squint, and a lot of what he announced looked pretty similar uh, to, to what Labour have been proposing for, for several months. I mean, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, it is clear where the ideas in British politics are coming from today, and that is from the Labour Party, because, as you know, and as I've spoken to you on this programme many times, the Labour Party have been calling for a windfall tax on those extraordinary profits that North Sea oil and gas companies are making for months now, and the Chancellor and the Prime Minister have resisted it at every stage. Yesterday, they bowed to the inevitable and did that 180-degree U-turn. It is hugely welcome, because we both know that there are lots of people really struggling, many people who have had sleepless nights, pensioners that are worried about turning on the heating because they don't know how they're going to pay the bills, mums and dads who don't know how they're going to pay for the new school uniform because there's just not that money there when bills are going through the roof. <laughs> so it's welcome, I, 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 I welcome the fact that the government have adopted Labour's policies. Well, the, the, the Chancellor, for his part, would say, well, look, it, it's not quite a carbon copy of your policy. For one thing, it's not a one-off. As it stands, this will go on for two and a half years. It will run to the end of the Parliament. He can change that. Uh, but in addition, of course, I mean, th this is... It's a lot of money. It is a huge amount of money. Do you think the way in which it is being distributed, it was something we talked about with the Chancellor, do you think that that is entirely fair? I don't think it's entirely fair. But, but do you take his point? But do you take his point? If you want to get the money out there quickly... Let me, let me give you an example. It, it is not right that if you own a second or a third home, you should get this 400 payment multiple times. You could have a situation where somebody who's incredibly wealthy gets £400 on three or four occasions because they own so many properties. That's more than some of the most vulnerable people in the country uh, get. And this is because this is all rushed through. The government have been resisting this. You've got the Chancellor's own deputy who said he only knew about it the night before. There are no... Uh, um, uh, no forecasts. You usually get an Office of Budget Responsibility forecast when you have big spending and yep. borrowing announcements like that. It was rushed through, and as a result, there are things in it that just shouldn't be there, like this, multiple payments to some of the wealthiest people. But, but, but again, the, the point that the Chancellor makes is, if you want to make sure that we get this money out there, you know, you have a toss-up, we can try and put together a system that would target it at the people most in need, but that would take time to put together, or you can do it this way. There's a degree of truth to that, isn't there? Well, if the government hadn't have been resisting Labour's calls for a windfall tax and this additional support for months, the government could have taken the time to get this package right. Instead, I think the timing of this package owes more to Sue Gray than it does to the economics, and the contents of it owe more to Labour than it do to uh, Conservative uh, thinking. So look, the government need to make sure that every pound of taxpayers' money is spent wisely. We've already seen billions of pounds written off by this government in fraud, for example. We don't want to see taxpayers' money being used to subsidise some of the richest people when some people need that additional support. So look, there's areas of this where we need to look into. But overall, of course, I welcome what we've been calling for, which was a windfall tax to help people with their extraordinary bills right now. So, so you agree with Rishi Sunak's assertion that this will have a minimal effect on inflation. Well, look, the problem is, is because this was rushed out, we haven't had I thought, I thought any it was independent... Your plan. I thought it was your plan. If it was your plan, you'd presumably have looked at this as well. Well, look, I, we haven't got those independent um, evaluations of the Office of Budget Responsibility because this government have cobbled this uh, together at the last minute. What I want to see, and I think what was missing yesterday, I think this goes to the, the point, is a longer-term strategy to deal with some of the underlying problems in our economy. So, for example, one practical thing that government could have done yesterday would have been to announce a, a, a whole um, a, a package around home insulation, to take money off people's bills, not through a one-off payment, mm -hmm. but through making their home more energy efficient, to save hundreds of pounds, not just for one year, but years into the future. My big worry is that we could be back here in exactly the same place next year because the government aren't getting to grip with some of the economic security and stability uh, issues, some of the post-Brexit, post-Covid sure. war issues that are affecting our supply chains and doing more uh, to get those long-term measures in place to have a stronger but, and more secure economy. But on the, on the point of inflation, the, clearly the Treasury will have looked at this, clearly the Labour Party will have looked at it when you are costing your own policy. Do you believe that this will have anything more than a minimal effect on inflation? Okay, did your plan 
have anything other than a minimal effect on inflation. I am worried about giving money to people who don't necessarily need it. So mm. this multiple payments to some of the richest people, you know, it, it, they don't need that money. That means additional spending in the economy. I don't think that is wise. That's why I think it should be targeted at those people who need it uh, uh, most. And then you would have less impact on inflation. That is why uh, targeting mm -hmm. does make a difference because uh, it's about paying for the day-to-day -day essentials, not just loads more demand spilling around in the economy. But look, you know, people need help paying mm -hmm. their bills now. That is absolutely essential. But the government do need to address some of these longer-term problems. Otherwise, we will just carry on lurching from crisis to crisis to crisis without any idea about how to address the fact that at the moment we have the highest inflation in the G7. Next year, the International Monetary Fund, so that we will have both the highest inflation and the lowest growth. The sure. government have got to address these big underlying challenges mm -hmm. that we are facing in Britain more than in other countries around the world. I mean, the, the, the head of the IFS quoted in the Times this morning is saying, you know, this would be a, a, a this would have been a statement that uh, Gordon Brown as Chancellor would have been proud of because of how redistributivist it was. I mean, would you agree with that assessment? Well, look, as I say, the package of measures uh, yesterday owes more to uh, the Labour Party than it does to Conservative thinking. Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, criticise a package of measures which asks the, the companies that are making huge profits and using that money to keep people's bills down. But I would say the Chancellor, and if I was Chancellor, I would want to make sure I was accounting for every pound of taxpayers' money spent. And giving tens of millions of pounds to people who own second homes is not a good use of taxpayers' money. And we know that the borrowing implications of yesterday's announcement mm -hmm. set, look, look to be £10 billion this year. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be using £10 billion of future taxpayers' money, you've got to ensure that you're getting value for money. And I'm not certain that that's happening, which is why we want to see those independent numbers verifying and setting out exactly what the government are spending and on who. Indeed. The, the other big concern, though, about windfall taxes of this measure is that it will restrict investment. And that, that was a complaint that was made about your plan. It's a, a, a point that has been made by the head of BP, of all organisations, about what we heard from the Chancellor yesterday. Isn't there a real risk, as we try to sort out our energy security, as we try to sort out our energy strategy, as we try to wring every last drop of the black stuff out of the North Sea, that we're actually you know, limiting uh, the possibility of organisations like BP doing that incredibly costly North the exploration. Well, the chief executive of BP has said that a windfall tax uh, wouldn't change their investment decisions. And it's clear to see why that's the they're, case. They're, they're saying they're looking again at them. I think they are reviewing them now. They, 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 things have changed since he appeared in front of the Select Committee. We're now talking in response to what we heard from the Chancellor yesterday. Well, when Labour set out its plans for windfall mm -hmm. tax, they said it wouldn't affect their long-term investment decisions. And you can see why that is the case, because you make decisions for the long term, not based on uh, extraordinary profits that are being made in in uh, one year, but the whole um, outlook. And so I wouldn't expect this to affect investment decisions, but where do we want the investment? We want investment in nuclear and in renewables, because we know that is the cheapest form of electricity. We also know it yeah, is best for the But you're not saying we're not going to take advantage planet. of the reserves that we have in the North Sea, are you? And, and for, to, to get those, we need exploration, we need investment. We also and that's need... a short-term business decision, not a long-term business decision for BP. Well, there's one thing government could be doing is ending its effective moratorium on onshore wind. It's the cheapest form of energy. And we could be getting going with that now, creating good quality jobs here in U the UK, building those turbines here, doing carbon capture and storage, getting on with the stalled nuclear investment. Those are practical things government can be doing to boost our energy security, less reliance on oil and gas, which are big polluters, and also meaning that we are less reliant on imports from Russia, Qatar and elsewhere. We need that investment to create those good quality jobs here in Britain.